It looks like we're going to welcome. Sorry, uh, Madam Clerk, will you? Uh, we're going to we're going to call to order the uh, public safety meeting. This is November the twenty second. It is roughly twelve oh three. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderwoman Davis. Present. Alderwoman Howard. Present. Alderwoman Tyus. Alderwoman Spencer. Present. Alderwoman Boy. Present. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Odenberg. He's excused. Alderman Narayan. Here. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Alderman Page. Present. Alderman Keys. Present. Chair Vaccaro. Present. Alderman Tyus. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Eight present. We have a quorum. Okay, so we need to take a motion. Uh, looking for the approval of the minutes from the November 16th meeting. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Okay, madam. We have a uh, for, uh, motion and a second. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Otter Woman Davis. Aye. Otter Woman Howard. Aye. Auto Woman Tyus. Auto Woman Spencer. Aye. Auto Woman Boy. Aye. Ottoman Bosley. Ottoman Odenberg. Ottoman Narayan. Aye. Auto Woman Clark Hubbard. Alderman Page. Aye. Alderwoman Keys. Aye. Chair Vaccaro. Aye. Alderwoman Tyus. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Oldenburg. Eight aye votes. Thank you, eight being present. We're gonna go ahead and get started here. I would like to swear in, I'd like to have you swear in we have one speaker today so far. We should have had more than this. I guess they'll join in, but uh, uh, Dale Holler, Holler, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's Haller. Haller. It's, it's the same A as an apple, two dots over the A. Okay, Haller. Well, Madam Clerk, would you swear, Mr. Haller? You raise your right hand. Do you affirm that the testimony you are about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. I Thank do. Thank you. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I, I received a phone call. Uh, he's one of my constituents. And his concern had to do with his interaction with the police and a car being towed. And I told him I would give him a, a minute or two. And I was kind of hoping that Director Isom should have been on here. And we'll, we'll also bring something up with, we'll bring the police chief into a, a further meeting. But I, since he signed on, I do want to give him a, a few minutes to explain what he's upset about. And, um, and, and I, I'm just going to go ahead and allow that. And then uh, just so you know, we will do a meeting and it, different date most likely next week with the chief with your concerns but since you have the public safety committee in front of you go ahead and uh, let them know your concerns and, and um, then we're going to go on from there okay, so you're 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 up mr heller uh good morning um, all the persons order. of the city of st louis thank Point you of order. Oh, state your point of order. Did we do the swearing in? Yes, they, they, she swore him in. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed it. No, I know. That's okay. And the chief's texted me. So I'm going to read my text while Mr. Holler is speaking. Um, good morning. My name's, excuse me, good afternoon. My name's Dale William Haller Jr. I live at 3136 Hampton. Um, first, I want to thank all of you older persons for your service and the job that you do. It's a thankless job, but I want you to know that I'm grateful because I love my city and I love my neighborhood. Um, I have a, a huge problem. Um, uh, I, my cars and um, my property have been vandalized several times. So it's become important to me to protect the things that I have and own. With that being said, I've taken it upon myself to acquire um, a legal weapon, uh, to become uh, legally trained, um, to conceal and carry and purchase the license from the city of St. Louis, kept up my license and training. However, after three times that are on record with the St. Louis City Police Department and paying the um, expensive deductibles for my insurance. Send something to Terry. I'm sorry. And spending the expensive amounts of money for the deductibles on my insurance. Um, I become vigilant along with my neighbors and um, keeping an eye on what's happening in our neighborhood. And we have a great neighborhood here um, in between Hartford and Junietta on Hampton Avenue. I invite you to please come by and look at how we keep our lawns, our yards, and the street clean in this row of Hampton Avenue. And I'm grateful for the services of the trees and the street cleanings that the city does. So the reason I'm here is Sunday, I left for a meeting. I'm an iron worker of 23 years, a certified English teacher of grades five through 12, and a coach in the city of St. Louis, and a musician who plays music in several venues and events in the city of St. Louis. I was leaving for a meeting Sunday at about, I'm gonna say roughly, 4.30, almost five o'clock. And I witnessed a man with a red car following closely behind it, stop and park their car in the middle of the driveway of an elderly neighbor on Junietta. Um, I noticed this, the behavior was suspicious. Um, I participate in the app called Next Door and know of all of the criminal behavior with the catalytic converters as where I'm a victim of that as well. And it's on record and the Kia situation. So um, I watched this person get into the other car and just leave the car right in front of that elderly woman's driveway. So I was leaving and parked at the end of my street right there at the corner uh, the north corner of Hampton and Junietta and called the police and said, spoke to the 911 operator. And by the way, I commend them because knowing the problem of the 911 sector uh, of calling in, my call was answered immediately and proficiently and the lady collected all of the data necessary and said she would make a call. I waited about 45 minutes for an officer to show up informing the people that I was gonna be late for my meeting for the event uh, that I was gonna be entertaining at in Soulard and um, they never showed up. So I left and came back and the car was still there. It did however have two tickets on the car but it was still parked in the ladies driveway. So I got up and went to work uh, Monday morning and came home and uh, at about, I'm going to say eight-ish, nine-ish in the morning. And there was a sergeant, and I don't remember his name, but I'll tell you that 
He was a heavy set man, wore glasses, and remarked that he was going to retire in about six months. And he was closely investigating and vigilantly researching information about the car. And uh, the little old lady came out and we were talking. And I told the sergeant, I'm like, because I'm active in my community. Um, Mr. Vaccaro knows as well as uh, Mr. Vollmer. Uh, I go to church at St. Ambrose on the Hill with Mr. Vollmer. And um, I frequent his establishment on the Hill as a result of my participation in my community. And I'm also very close friends, very close friends with Joe Barbalia. And you can um, confirm my, uh, my commitment to our community in this neighborhood with him as well. But in speaking with the sergeant, he told me that there were only two officers on patrol in my neighborhood. And they were trainees because all of the other officers were off the streets in training. Think about that. Two trainee officers in my district and all the other ones are in training. And there's a sergeant with six months left in his career out investigating something as simple as a car that should have been removed from the driveway of a constituent more than 24 hours ago. That concerned me and I called Mr. Vollmer and we had a conversation and I can't tell you how grateful and respectful I am for Mr. Vollmer because I try to contribute to our city. I try to do the right things for the right reasons. And in the past, so much so that I've gone to the news and complained with and met Lauren Traeger and spoke on camera on public television and made aware that I was going to do so with Mr. Vollmer regarding the policy previously, which was if you get your car ripped off, you're victimized twice, once by the robber and then by the city having to pay the fines to have to get possession of your car. And if you're a man like my roommate was, who works as a cook in a restaurant and delivers pizzas just to survive, that I think it was almost $300 to get your car out of the tow yards, a large amount of money. With that being said, um, I thought to myself, why is there two trainees for all of my ward working and nobody's dealing with this problems? Ladies and gentlemen, I know that this is not just a problem in my community, in my ward, I know it's a problem everywhere. Um, I've gone to great lengths to protect my things. Um, as an iron worker, I have the good fortune of knowing how to weld. I've welded washers over the locks of my van. I'll be happy to go out if you'd like me to and take my laptop and show you the plate that I've had to weld over the license cover because of the criminals who are breaking in to my van or trying to break into my cars and steal the catalytic converters or audio equipment that I have to keep in my van because I don't have enough space to store them in my home. I bought security cameras. I bought car alarms, but still, um, and I know that you're powerless over some of these problems, but at the same token, you have the power to help people like me who are trying to pay my bills, who pay taxes, who keep their neighborhood clean, who try to keep their neighborhood safe. And all I'm asking is keep the police that we have on the streets, keep them serving and protecting us and reward them 
you know, I'm aware that there's a lot of money sitting in limbo. Spend some of that money. Give them raises. Hire more, please. I'm all for training. I'm a teacher. Do you see? This is not a picture. This is literally the books behind me. I understand the power of education. I'm an iron worker who went to college and became an English teacher while iron working. I know what hard work, what brutally physically demanding intellectual, emotional work is like. I know you've got a tough job. We, I, I know you have to listen to a lot of people, but please help us. Please help us. Thank, thank you for you. letting me share. No, I appreciate that. I don't mean to cut you short, but we're, we're, I'm going to have you back to speak when I can actually get the chief and them in, and I'll try to do that for next week. But I did, since I had anticipated that they would be here, but they're not. Um, I didn't want to go and let you speak, but I also, the fire chief's here, so I know I have to kind of move forward because he is limited in his time. I'm thankful for letting you speak. And again, to all of you older persons, I'm grateful for the thankless job that you do. And I ask again, please help us. Thank, thank you. And thank you. And you, you can hang on if you want. Uh, we're going to go on with the meeting. <clears throat> I, uh, or you can leave. It's just it's your call. If you, but this is what we do now. It's kind of, uh, might be boring, may not. You never know. I'll leave. I've said what I need to say. And again, thank you, all of you older persons, for the thankless job you do. Okay. God bless. Thank you for coming in. Um, so uh, I would think, since it's my resolution, and I don't see the vice chair person here. I would imagine that uh, either Alderwoman Davis or Howard, whoever wants to chair this while I'm presenting my bill <clears> or <throat> my resolution, I guess that that's appropriate. I'll yield to Alderwoman Howard. So Alderwoman Howard, you're the uh, you're running things now, and I am. Thank you, Alderwoman from the 19th. Okay, um, let me grab the agenda here. It, it, it's resolution number resolution 147, number 145. 145, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Um, Alderman Vaccaro, would you like to give us a description of Alder, of, um, board resolution number 145? Yes. Um, we need well, to make a motion to put it before the committee. I don't think so, I think I'm just, uh, Okay. I think you're giving me permission to speak on the board bill. Go right um, ahead. And I, I did ask the fire chief to come in also. Um, the board bill is simple. Are, do we want to swear him in and take care of that? Oh, probably? yeah, you have to. Yeah, that, yes, I'm sorry. All right. Ms. Higgs. Uh, do you affirm that the testimony you are about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Alderman Vicaro, proceed. Okay, so this resolution, which I believe almost everyone during the regular meeting was wanting to sign on to it, but it got referred to committee. I, you know, I had to send it somewhere. Um, right now, there are seventeen promotions that have been being held up for years and a test that hasn't been given for years and a court order ordering that the promotions be made and that, that a test be put out. Uh, I was kind of hoping, although he was here at the last meeting, would have been Director Dan Isom, but I what I'm asking for is simply that these promotions, and I think we're asking for these promotions to be made. I asked the, the chief, are these necessary promotions? And do we need to take a test? I mean, that's why I want the chief to come in. I mean, am I just uh, barking up the wrong tree? I mean, I talked to the guys and they're telling me these are very necessary and it's a court order. 
And if, if I could have the chief speak on that, I would appreciate it. So, Madam Chair, uh, I'm asking if I can ask the chief directly questions. I'll answer any questions you ask me. Okay, but I got to go through the chair. It kind of goes like that. Uh, yes, uh, Alderman Vicaro. Um, uh, chief, will you defer to Alderman Vicaro for questions? Yes. Okay. Chief, there's 17 promotions. My understanding there's black females, there's minority uh, participants, minorities that have been held back that have not gotten these. Getting just even going beyond all that. Are, are these even necessary? Do, uh, my understanding, they're extremely necessary for the safety of the firefighters. Am I wrong? No, I, I don't believe you're wrong, Alderman Vicaro. Um, this is part of my table of organization, my TO, um, that I go through a budgetary process uh, to have all positions approved from EMTs, paramedics, the firefighters, the captains, battalion chiefs, deputy chiefs, on up to my position. So. Um, I believe these positions are warranted. I did agree. I mean, your statement regarding that the test uh, has been around for a while is old. I agree with that statement. Uh, I, I, I've been trying to push a three-year test for all positions, promotable positions within the fire department that, that hasn't come to fruition yet. Um, but no, I, I, I do believe that the positions are warranted within the budget and the uh, the yearly process of the city. And that's why as I, uh, as we have open positions, I do put in the requisitions uh, as I, as I have to on, every time we have a position come up, I put in a rec and they've been held up. So, uh, and my understanding is that uh, the personnel department granted them and they're being held up by the public safety director. I don't know if that is true. Uh, I believe they are being held up through the Department of Public Safety th through my direct report. So, but you, so you put in for these, you feel they're necessary, you put in for them. Correct. And so far, and how long ago did you put in for these? Oh, this has been going now on about probably nine months. Okay. So what I, what I what I am asking and what this resolution says, and I do believe the majority of all the aldermen are going to sign on to this, is that they go ahead and do these promotions and put this test together. And the one thing I can tell say, and I'll say very publicly, if not, this if 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 they're not are they, well, I guess, my, are they talking to you about this? It seems like, are they moving on this at all? Or is it still it is just nothing? Who would they be? I'm not sure. They talking. mean the, the, anybody. The, the, you put in for these, it's going to come through the public safety director, or the office of personnel. Has anybody said, okay, well, let's go ahead and let's make these promotions. Has anybody talked to you in the last week or so about this? No, they're, they're right now, as far as I know, the, uh, the director of public safety has some concern over the staffing levels of the city fire department. And he has at this time put all promotions on hold within the fire department side, battalion chiefs and captains. I have three openings for battalion chiefs at this current time and 11 open for captains. Okay. So, and I will say to this committee, my plan is since you know was to do this resolution in hopes that they would start to talk i will start to prepare a board bill and if the mayor wants to veto it i believe we have the votes on the board to, to override any veto uh to me this seems important so uh you know i i don't, don't have much to say on this this is why I put this together. My hopes were that this was going to get them to start to move. I don't want this to end up in court because that's where it's going to go from here. Then we're going to lose in court, which I believe, I mean, I don't know, but I believe. And just like all the other lawsuits, we're not only going to be paying back pay and doing all kinds of stuff, we're going to be paying out you know, lawsuits and, you know, 
it, to me, it, it was in Board Bill 1. All these positions are fully funded. All these, these, these are positions that all of a sudden somebody, one person or two, has decided that these are positions that are no longer necessary. All I know is we're the board of all their people. And uh, like I said, my next step will be, this will be a board bill. We'll get a board bill out there that tell them to do this. And I believe we would have the votes to override any board bill. I'm doing all this to try to get them to do the right thing, what I believe is the right thing. So I have, I have no other comments, uh, Madam Chair. I'll just okay. kind of sit back and listen. Um, at this time, I will open it up for the committee members to ask questions. Um, either will you accept questions, Alderman Vaccaro and, and uh, Chief? Oh, yeah, I'm open to whatever questions anyone okay. has. Okay. All right. So uh, I will start. And is uh, the Vice Chair, uh, Alderman T Alderwoman Tyus, on the call? She, she's not here. That's why I had to have someone stop. Okay. All right. Um, Alderman, Alderwoman Davis, do you have any questions of either Alderman DeCaro or Chief uh, Jankerson? I do, yes. Oh. Proceed. Uh, Chief Jankerson, uh, I would like to have some data made available. Uh, when you said you had 10 openings for captains, that's a little serious. So for the public, and for all the persons who may not be aware of how critical that is, would you please, uh, and I'm gonna ask that you make some data available through the chairperson to the committee and other aldermen. I'd like to know how many firehouses we have. So we have 30 firehouses. Okay. And with the airport as well that I staff. Yes, now that's been brought on board, right. We also, I, I would like to know the members who are needing their promotions, could you identify for each of them how long they've been serving in these positions, each one of them, without the proper pay and promotion? Okay, as... I'd have to give you the exact dates. I have to pull that from payroll. But um, as I have openings occur due to uh, retirements, resignations, I assign the next member who is el eligible based on the certified list. I assign them as an acting captain or as an acting battalion chief. So I have specific assignment dates that I can pull for you. I, I mean, it's, it, it'll take me a little while, but I can pull those exact dates. True, and I'm fine with that. I know it's gonna take a little time uh, because we really have two separate issues that we're dealing with. Uh, and that's why I made the statement last week that I want to help the individuals uh, deal with the city of St. Louis because there are some federal laws that we are uh, not abiding by as for the individuals. And so uh, I, I wanna get this data so I can help them. Okay. Also, um, I'd like to have the actual date that they took the test, because some of them took the test at different times and have been on the eligibility list for a while. Yes, ma'am. The, the battalion chiefs took the date or took the test on one date. And all the members who are on the captain's promotional list took the test on the same day. So we, it's two different ranks, but all right. members based on their rank took it on the same day. Right. And so we need to know that date. I can get that. Right. I'll, I'll pull those for you. Okay. Uh, and uh, we know that when you are in a work environment and you have leadership who makes decisions and assign you to do work, uh, if that is not your classification, what you're hired for and what your salary is, 
there are laws that say you don't do that job forever and not be paid appropriately. Uh, and so on that list of all those people, we do know that each of them at different times were assigned to those uh, positions of being uh, identified as captains, of being identified as battalion chiefs. And so we need to know the dates for each one of them. That way we know how long they've been serving in these positions that all of a sudden somebody says they need to take another test to determine whether or not they're qualified. Obviously they're qualified because they've been doing the job, they passed the test, and there's no question about that other than we have been unfair and not paid them the appropriate salary and given them their promotions. And so it's important for people to be able to identify how long that each of them have been in those positions, serving the city of St. Louis without delay and without, for me, it's without question that they will continue to serve. But my problem is we are not fair and we are unlawful by not giving them the salary, number one. Even if they weren't going to get the, the promotion, they should have got the salary because they're doing the job. So I, I really, really, really am very concerned about this. And for me, making data public uh, is important. I will I don't get that information. Any... Yes, thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman from the 19th. Next would be Alderwoman Kara Spencer. Do you have any questions? Uh, thank you. I don't have any further questions. Um, although I, you know, this issue is obviously very important. I want to thank um, the chairman for bringing it forward and the alderwoman from the 19th for asking some of the questions that were on my mind. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next would be alderwoman Boyd. Uh, I'm like alderwoman Spencer, uh, Auto Woman Dave is a hard act to follow. She has asked all the questions that we wanted to be asked. And so uh, I'm just concerned because again, as I keep saying, we are not good employers for our employees. And so if we don't fight for them, who will? So thank you, Auto Woman Davis. Okay, thank you very much. Um, moving on, Alderman Older Oldenburg. Are you on the call? I, I believe he's excused. Alderman Narayan. Do you thank have you. Uh, no, no question. Just wanted to thank uh, Chief Jankerson for his time today. And uh, just a, a quick comment, <clears throat> because I have heard from uh, constituents about this issue. Um, I think it's important to remember that these are folks who took the test. They did well enough to pass it. The director of personnel signed off on it. These guys are, men and women are doing the job on a day-to-day -day basis. They're putting their butts on the line, going into burning buildings on a day-to-day -day basis. The Board of Aldermen has allocated the funds for these promotions. It, it's time to promote these men and women. Um, it's, it's that simple to me. There's no reason not to. I understand that there's issues uh, with the, the, the age of the test. We can promote these men and women and figure out the issues with a new test moving forward. Uh, there, there is a, a bonus that this does increase the diversity of the St. Louis Fire Department. And if we promote these men and women, which is the right thing to do, we also can hopefully avoid the cost of litigation because this is going to be expensive litigation. And I believe that the, the men and women seeking promotions are going to win that litigation. I think that the decree is quite clear. I'm not sure what the holdup is. I'm not sure if there's some politics behind it or if there's some personal issues behind it. I don't know what's going on with it, but it's simple. It's time to promote these men and women. There's no reason not to. It's the right thing to do and it's gonna save the city money in the long run. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Um, Alderwoman uh, Clark Hubbard. I don't believe she's on the call. Alderman Page. Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much. I, I would only like to echo the questions and comments 
made by the older woman from the 19th. I think they pretty much covered the spectrum uh, and shared my concerns. So no further questions or comments beyond that. Thank you very much. Um, Alderwoman Keys, do you have any more questions or have any question at all here? Thank you. No, I do not have any questions. And uh, again, thank you to uh, uh, Alderwoman uh, Davis and uh, Navarro uh, for the very thoughtful uh, uh, comments and I am in agreement. Okay. Um, Chief Jankerson, I do have a question just for a, a little sharper clarity on this. How long have these people been on this list for promotion? And I know there's two different dates, but let's say the captains and then the ch battalion chiefs. You know, I, I believe that this test has been around almost seven years. Um, so it, it's, which isn't uncommon for the fire department because we don't have a, a, a contract agreement to give a test every so many years, which I have been asking for since I've been chief. Uh, it, it is of my opinion that we should test for promotions every three years. So we're, we're, we're approaching seven to eight years with this list. But like I said, it's, it's, it's not uncommon for the fire department to get stuck in a 10 year testing rut. And these members on the list, as you said, did pass the test and it's not a single test. It's multiple tests. It's a written test. It is a oral interview. It is, you know, an assessment center. So there's a battery of three tests and it, they are difficult tests. Mm -hmm. and, and the spread between these members is often hundreds of a point. So th these are, in my opinion, very experienced, uh, very traveled and uh, seasoned members of the St. Louis City Fire Department and worthy of promotion. Okay, and one more question. Since it's been seven years, have any of the people that qualified for this test been assigned and given the position of battalion chief or captain other than acting? You know, as I, as the fire department has vacancies when people retire or resign, I immediately put in a requisition for a certification from the department of personnel. And, and at the most, it normally takes me two to three weeks to get all the information back and get the members promoted. So um, as I've been chief for 15 years, We've never had a time where we've had to wait for promotions like this. So um, as I get the certification list, it shows me their rank. As I have vacancies, I assign them to the vacancies as an acting captain or an acting battalion chief. So and like I said, these have occurred over the last nine to 10 months. And as their numbers come up, they've been assigned to those positions within that time period. So yes, some of them have been acting for almost a year. Okay, I was just wondering if some went back seven years. So it, it's basically most of them have been in the position for a year or, le or, or less. Yes. Approximately. Okay. So yeah, it's that's that's unconscionable that we would take advantage of people like that. And I appreciate all the questions that have been asked. And uh, at this time, Alderman Beccaro, do you wish to close? Yeah, just very quick. So I would hope. Uh, first off, I think we should do it in bank coming out of the committee. That's up to the committee. But I would hope that us meeting and the meeting that we had at the full board will send a strong message to the those that feel that this is, should be held up for whatever purpose, that they get this done. And if not, I guarantee that the next step will be a board bill. And even if the mayor was to choose to say, veto the board bill, we would have, I believe, the 20 plus people to override it. I'm only saying all this to hopefully encourage them to move forward. We're supposed to be a team. I'm trying to work with them. I'm not trying to be mean or threaten or jump up or down. I just really would like to see them make these promotions. Let's move on. We don't need to be in court. I think it's the responsibility now of the Board of Aldermen and uh, in this case, the, the full board, you know, um, that we, we do this. So I, I guess I would ask that we would pass this out to the full board 
what they do pass on this um, uh, resolution, resolution number 145. And certainly if anybody- Do we have a motion to pass this uh, resolution 145 out to the full board with a do pass recommendation? So, so moved. moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, do we need, uh, let's do roll call. Alderwoman Davis? Aye. Alderwoman Howard? Aye. Alderwoman Tyus? Alderwoman Spencer? Aye. Alderwoman Boyd? Aye. Alderman Bosley? Aye. Alderman Odenberg? Alderman Orion? Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard? Alderman Page? Aye. Alderwoman Keys? Aye. Chair Vaccaro? Aye. Alderwoman Tyus? Alderman Odenberg? 10 aye votes. I, I would, if you'd accept the motion, I'd like to make, some, make a motion that we do it in bank out of committee. Second. Uh, do I hear any objection? All in favor? And I, I, would just, I would just say yeah, I or previous aye. role, one or the other. Previous role, either way. Okay. I think you, it, it is in bank. Every committee member agrees to that. So uh, from that, I will turn it back to you, Alderman Vaccaro, as the chair. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that. Um, I have no other, that was it. I mean, I just hope that we can get this done just because it's the right thing to do. Chief, thank you. I know I'm trying not to put you in an, in an uncomfortable position. I know you, I can say that it, uh, firefighters that live in the neighborhood, firefighters that catch me in the grocery store are the ones that are really saying it's unfair. I will say you have not called me and said, Joe, get something done for for those that might say, you know, I, but I am putting you in an uncomfortable position to be here, but I do appreciate that. And and I know you want to do the right thing, the same as us for the guys. I appreciate it. All member Carl, firefighting is an uncomfortable profession. <laughs> Ain't it? You ought to you try being the other person sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else? I appreciate all your time and I hope everybody has a safe Thanksgiving. Well, have the ambulance standing by. I'm gonna probably eat myself into a coma. So, anyway, and me and my son are going to, well, he's a firefighter, but we are going to fry a turkey in the backyard. So, <laughs> just, just FYI. Uh, anyone else have anything to speak out? You can just open your mics, anyone else? Happy giving to everyone. And I make a motion, we close the meeting and... I'll, I'll second that. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank you all. And we'll see you all at the meeting that's in about an hour from now, whoever's on that one. Anyway, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Be safe. <laughs>